We are now recording. And so as I was saying, so this is just, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's one of the seed labs focus on firewalls, but in particular, it's like we're looking at the code level, right? So how did Cisco or any, anyone else, how did they write their code to put the firmware into those devices that you guys have been playing with? So obviously we're not gonna look at all the firmware, that's too much. We're just gonna look at the thing related to firewall root, okay? And so the, the it should be, a, a, you know, just so today, self-contained assignment. I've pretty much gone over it and made it very um, easy for you. So basically you have this folder, as I was saying, lwfw.tar. You have to download this into your VM. And then I'll give you a set of commands. So use like make, right? And those commands, and it'll basically compile it. Remember, this is not a script. This is a compiled uh, language, C, C++. So you're going to have to compile every time that you change it. The other tricky thing about this is that you will not be running it like you would run a program on the terminal. That would be, and if, as you saw, for instance, in some of the labs like the TCP reset lab or the other ones, right? It's inefficient to do that at the network level, right? And so what we need to do for this firewall to actually be good is we need to hook it to the Linux kernel. So we're literally going to use a functionality of Linux that allows you to, allows you to create a, a program, but connect it into the Linux kernel as much as possible, right? There's a, imagine that the Linux kernel is like a thing, right? And then there's like ports almost, right? Where you can plug in certain programs, right? And that's called a Linux uh, kernel, Linux kernel LKM, Linux kernel modules. So what we do, and that's not complicated. It's just, you know, set of commands. And we have, when we compile the program, we have to compile it in a special way, okay? The code is already written. It's got something called uh, hooks, which basically allow the code to connect to certain parts of the firewall of Linux. And it already has these. Now keep in mind, uh, when we cover IP tables, we will cover chains. And, and basically what that will mean is we will look at how uh, different chains handle different types of packets. So, you know, are, are, if the packet going to that specific machine, that's a specific chain. Or is the packet coming out of that machine? That's a specific chain. Or is the packet going from one interface to another interface in the device, right? Like a router has two interfaces, a firewall has two, two interfaces. So that's another chain called a forward chain. This, um, we'll talk, but don't worry about that. We'll talk about that later. What's important about this is that this uh, library only supports one of the chains. It's, it's built just to kind of test out one of the chains. I believe it's the input chain. So basically it only handles packets directed at it. So that would be if you're SSHing or telnetting into that specific machine. But if it was a router, which it isn't, and it was just forwarding a packet from one interface to the other, like from one network to the other network, then these firewall, uh, these rules would not trigger. Okay, they only trigger for the specific input. All right, so keep that in mind. That shouldn't be an issue, but you know, I just want you to know that. So inside this tar file, there is a file called LWFW. And if you notice, I've created a new one called LWFW Student Starter Code. So what you have to do is when you download this file, back up the original LWFW and then replace it with this one, but rename it obviously as the original. Okay, so don't forget to do that. And then once you've done that, this is the file where you will write your own code, okay? So if we download this file, Okay, and you guys, let me see if I have to share this. So if you guys look at this file here, this is a C, C++ file, very much in line with other things that we have done this semester that was C, C++. Remember, you don't have to touch any of this. All of it is already working except here. 
you can see here there's going to be a function in the code, right? And the function is called LWFW hook function. And you can see here within the curly brackets that I have written insert your code in this function. So this is literally where this is. That's where your, uh, your code will go and nowhere else. Okay. Uh, this code has been changed for the ITS 454 lab assignment. All changes need only be made here. Uh, this is the function that will be called by the hook. Okay, so as I said, uh, this, you know, whenever you, basically the, this code, all of this code, all that you need to know intuitively is that you're going to load it up into the Linux kernel and it's going to basically be put in the path of all packets coming in to the input chain. And so they will go through this one because they are hooked and so they will be passed then, um, they will be passed then to the, oops, they will be passed to the, this function, okay? And so the packet will be inspected. And if the packet um, contains something, right? We're gonna remember at the end of the day, we're treating packets exactly as we've treated them before. You know, we're breaking it up into the Ethernet header, the IP header, the TCP or UDP header, <coughs> payload header, and then we're going to inspect them. You guys understand? That's it. I mean, it, it's not a complicated thing. You can take a look at the, at the rest of the code if you're interested in how it hooks to the operating system, et cetera. But really, what you, you know, the goal of this is just for you to write some if statements here that relate to. Um, some some problems. I'll give you like two or three questions to play with. Let me grab my and I'll give you more information. Kind of give you the big picture right here. All right. So this is it's a simple, nice lab. I think it just shows you how how simple it is. Um, you know how the, how the firmware works. This builds on top on top of the same lib pcap library that we've been using all semester. It has to be in C++, C++ obviously, because C++, C++ is the fastest, most efficient language. And here, the, you know, for the network, uh, that's important. Okay, so, so that's basically the code. So I think hopefully that makes sense, right? So, so I've given you kind of the mechanics of this quite a bit. Um, and so you, you need these two files. These PDFs, I think they're just the same PDF uh, over time that they've changed. Uh, one thing that I want to point out, so I'm going to have to share that document. So if you take a look at this, at this PDF, right? This is the original one. It's divided into two sections. The IP tables section. IP tables, we will start covering a much broader topic, much bigger. You know. So we'll start covering IP tables after spring break, okay? But because it's such a big topic, I want I left it for, for that point. And so really, but this document has also the information. So you can see here, all of this, uh, uh, this part here talks about IP tables. This part here, how, fi how firewalls work is the part that relates to this. So we're, this is what we're doing today. So wherever you see loadable kernel module, LKM, that's what we're talking about, right? So, and I'll, I'll read through this a little later, but so you can see here, you have information about LKM. Now this part evading egress filtering, this we won't do. Um, right now, this is also after spring break. It doesn't have anything to do with C++. These are just fun things that we're going to do, like evading a firewall and, uh, and the proxy firewall squid that I had talked about. That's also for after spring break. But this document does have, um, this is a Perl script. It, it has this, this, these guidelines. So again, the loadable kernel module, it's something that you would need for this lab, OK? So this has to do with uh, C, C++. So wherever you see C, C++, basically, uh, that's something that you probably could use to read. Okay, so I'll give you, as I said, more info on this, and we're gonna read through it 
in a second. But here, just kind of laying out what is relevant in today's lab. And then this, this all anything with CC++ in it. Also, this talks about the LWFW. So obviously, so those parts of this document are relevant, where you see C++ C, C++ or LWFW. And then um, you can see it talks a little bit about the, the files, et cetera. So this, I think this is the older document. And then we can take a look at the, at the newer version of this, which I also posted, I believe. And there's overlap, of course. I think it's this one. If we take a look. Or not. Did I have the same document? Oh, so I, I guess this is the new document. All right, so then we can take a look at this one. And again, it only the part that pertains to LWFW and or CC++ code, right? So we should all be seeing this currently. Okay, so you can see here, um, wherever you see IP tables, that's things for the next after spring break. Okay, so this is just the new Docker stuff. Um, here again, see this talks about LKM. So this part is relevant to this lab. All of this is relevant, you know, the code. So you can read through that. Talks about make files. I'll give you the commands in a second. So um, in theory, you don't have to read this, but I recommend that you do read it. Okay, but we'll go over that in a second. So you can see here all LKM is uh, indicated and explains uh, little sections of the code. So that might be of interest to you. Um, now keep in mind, we do have a different version of VM, right, 2004. So it's, it's probably worth looking at some of this to make sure that we have the appropriate function, okay? So if you have issues, it might be something like this, okay? So we'll come back to that. Uh, so we got all this. So this might be the part that you kind of have to adjust a little bit in the code to reflect the new um, VM. Okay, and then and then if everything where, wherever you see IP tables, etc., that's going to be as I said for the second half of the semester. We'll do, I'll explain all of this later. Get rid of that. All of this is IP tables. So that will come out. Yep, all of this. Yeah, all of this. Right. So that's it. So these are the two documents. Definitely, as I said, very important to read uh, the parts, um, especially when you see something that says in 2004, you might need this function instead of that function. Okay. All right, so that's kind of the documentation that I have. So basically for this lab, you have to read these two PDFs and you have to download this file and you have to uh, modify this, right? So uh, let's take a look at um, the documentation here. So this actually, I'm gonna get rid of that. All right, so Linux, um, you know, we you know what firewalls are, so I don't, I'm not going to give you the overview of firewalls. Uh, we are ba basically building here a packet filter, you know, the simplest firewall, all right? We're just going to be looking at some fields in the headers. Um, so we'll kind of zero in on this one. So how firewalls work and what, and by that, this, you know, it, you know the question is, basically referring to how do they work in the code, right? And so the firewall you used in the previous task or in previous tasks are called packet filtering type firewalls. Um, the main part of this firewall is the filtering part, which is what we will focus on today, which inspects each incoming and outgoing packet and enforces firewall policies set by the administrator. Since the packet processing is done within the kernel, which is what I was talking about. If you think about it, when you when the Linux kernel or the Linux operating system analyzes the packets, it's, it's kind of done within its internal space, right? Not the application space. Uh, the filtering must also be done 
within that kernel. And so it presents a problem for us, uh, but Linux has a solution. Therefore, it seems that implementing such a firewall requires us to modify the Linux kernel and then recompile the whole thing. And we actually don't need to do that. Uh, in the past, this has been done by modifying the kernel code and rebuilding uh, the entire kernel image. However, modern, modern Linux operating systems provide several new mechanisms to facilitate the manipulation of packets without requiring the kernel image to be rebuilt. Uh, these two mechanisms are NetFilter and the loadable kernel module. Okay, so LKM allows us to add a new module to the kernel on the runtime. Okay, so, so that we don't have to recompile everything. This new module enables us to extend the functionalities of the kernel without rebuilding it or even rebooting the computer. The packet filtering part of firewalls can be implemented as an LKM. So that's what we're gonna be doing. And we're gonna have to learn just a few commands. The code that I've given you should be, uh, should have that. Uh, in order for the filtering module to block incoming outgoing packets, the module must be inserted into the packet processing path. This cannot be easily done in the past before NetFilter was introduced into Linux. Net filter is designed to facilitate the manipulation of packets by authorized users. Net filter achieves this goal by implementing a number of hooks in the Linux kernel. These hooks are inserted into various places, included, including the packet incoming and out outgoing paths. Okay? If we want to manipulate the incoming packets, we simply need to connect our own program within LKM to the corresponding hooks. Okay? Once a, an incoming packet arrives, our program will be invoked. Our program can decide whether this packet should be blocked or not. Moreover, we can also modify the packet uh, in the program. We will actually see this in IP tables because IP tables is more flexible, but it, it uses the same scheme that you, know, you can modify uh, the packet actually. So in this task, you need to use LKM and NetFilter to implement the packet filtering module. This module will fetch the firewall policies from a data structure. Uh, uh, we'll, for, for our purposes, we'll keep it simple and we'll just hard code the rules, okay? There's a way that you can actually set up like a text file that's also linked to the Linux kernel module, but that's extra work. So we'll just basically hard code the rules. Um, so you'll have to load and unload uh, the module every time you do that, but it should be straightforward. So I'll give you the commands and then you just have to implement them. But remember with this one, as with other ones, you kind of have to test, well, here it works. Then I add the rule and now it doesn't work, right? So you gotta do something like that. Um, this module will fetch the firewall policies from a data structure and use the policies to decide whether packets should be blocked or not. Uh, to make your life easier, you can uh, focus on the filtering part the core of firewalls. Um, and you can, and as I said, you can hard code your policies. In there. Uh, here it says you should support at least five different rules, including the one specified in the previous task. You guys see that? Five rules. Hey, I'll, I'll provide probably two or three, but you guys will have to do the other two. Okay. As long as, so, so what are five rules? You know, well, that's actually a tough question when you only have a few headers to look at, right? If you can do a payload one, that's great, but that's extra work. Um, I will give you at least ways of getting the IP and the TCP headers, right? Let's say. So that means that you could do a rule for ports. Those are services. You can do one for IPs or ranges of IPs. You can do one for protocol, right? Protocol is not service, right? Protocol is TCP or UDP versus, or ICMP versus um, ports, which are SSH, you know, and, and so on. So that's three right there, right? I don't know if you guys can think of another two. So you've got protocol, IPs, port numbers or services. Any, any other two that you could, flags could be something that you could look at, flags, uh, if, you, if you can figure it out. Um, payload would be a great one. Can figure it out, but I leave it to you. It, 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 the, it's not meant to be complicated, so just different. If you do five rules, 
where you block SSH for SSH for one and Telnet for the other one and port 80 for the other one, you're just going to get credit for one, right? So, because th those five would be the same one. They're all, you're just blocking the different numbers. Does that make sense? So please, you know, pay attention. The whole point is for you to explore other things. And this will help you to think also um, as you do the project and as you do the IP table stuff. So all of, oh, there's a lot of overlap at this point, right? In what we're doing, so, you know, but hopefully you're, you're looking at all of it. So that should be useful. Um, so as, as, as it says here, you should support at least five different rules, including the ones specified in the previous task. So what this what that means is here it's talking about some things. Right? So, um, so question number one, what types of hooks does NetFilter support and what can you do with these hooks? So try to draw a diagram to show how packets flow through the hooks, which you know, probably just read online. Uh, question number two, where should, uh, where should you place a hook for ingress filtering and where should you place a hook for egress filter? So you can read through that, read uh, through the documentation. Can you modify packets using net, net, net filter? Basically? Now this optional part we can skip. So it says here a firewall should support dynamic configuration that you can set the policies, you know, outside, but you know, we're gonna uh, ignore that. Okay, so we can ignore that. And that's basically the description of it. Remember everything else just relates to things we're gonna do later on in the semester after spring break. And then here, uh, this one, you can skip. This is actually Perl. No. Now here is uh, some information. So this is the, the Linux kernel module or the loadable kernel module. As I said, I will basically provide the, the commands for this, but this is a simple loadable kernel module. It simply prints hello world when the module is loaded. When the module is removed from the kernel, it prints uh, bye bye world. Uh, the messages are not printed out on the screen. screen. They are actually printed into the syslog um, log file. Okay, and then you can, so you can read to see if it works. So, so if you want to first just play around with Linux kernel module before starting your code, you can try this, right? And as I said, this will just load up. Notice that if you look at this, it's got some files, Linux, module, and kernel, right? And then you create module and, and that's basically it. It writes to a file. So we, you need to create a make file. Uh, the LWFW that I provided should have the make file. So you only need to run the commands for it. And the make files, you remember from C are just ways of compiling your code. This program is called hello C for instance. So usually on the terminal, when, the, when there's a make file, you just have to type make. And the above program will be compiled, but remember it is compiled in a special way as a loadable kernel module. So it's not a C program, uh, you know, but it's a loadable kernel module. You can see a make file here. Now this is important actually. This is uh, what I will give you. Uh, once the module is built by typing make, you can use the following commands to load the module. What, what that means is, you know, you compile your program in uh, your, your hard drive, in your desktop, let's say, right? And then it becomes a loadable uh, kernel module, but it's still not loaded, okay? So then you have to load it. So once the module is built by typing make, you can use the following commands to load the module. Uh, or you can also uh, list all modules and you can also remove a module. So I would recommend once you finish this lab, make sure that you remove those modules from the kernel. All right? you can see here, assuming uh, it was uh, created and it's called mymod.ko, uh, then to wanna upload it into the Linux kernel module, it should be sudo insmod and then the name of the file. If you wanna see what's loaded, list all modules, then you do lsmod. And it, when, when you're done or, or when you're gonna, um, 
modify it, etc. Right? Remove it and recompile it, and then upload the new one. So to remove, it should be sudo rm mod my mod dot ko ko. You can also mod info my mod to show information about uh, a Linux kernel module. Okay. And that's kind of it. Uh, this, this part, the processing part, this has to do with putting in the policies dynamically. But this part uh, we can see, I mean, you can do it if you'd like, but it's not required, right? So you can just hard code the rules. But this just talks about that. So it might be something that you find interesting to do. All right, and then I'll talk about the rules and how to do the, uh, the net filtering in a second. Okay, so we're talking, we're, we're gonna talk about the, the syntax for dropping packets, for instance. So here you can see, for instance, NF drop, right? So if you can, so that's, this is the code, as you can see here. Uh, so one code is, cause you can use Linux kernel modules for other things, right? You can load a monitoring tool or whatever. Something into the Linux kernel module. So that's one thing. For the firewall, though, we need net filter. So using net filter is quite straightforward. All we need to do is to hook our functions in the kernel module to the corresponding net filter hook. And here's an example. Here's an example. So we've got the two Linux kernel module uh, imports, and now we've got net filter also. So, and then basically you're gonna have the structure uh, to register your functions. And then you have the hook function here. So this is the fo hook function itself, the hook function, right? That allows you um, to connect to the kernel. And then inside the curly brackets, this is where you can inspect the packet contained in the structure pointed by SKB, okay? So you can see that this is the structure that contains the packet itself okay and decide whether to accept or drop it so i still need to give you a little bit of code on how to go from that packet skb to the if statement and then to um what you need to do so you're going to basically inspect skb and decide whether to accept or drop the packet or even modify it if you wanted to do that uh, in this example, for instance, to drop packets, you just do NF drop, okay? And then that should take care of the process. And then these are just the initializations, et cetera. So the LWFW uh, it is the little file. This was written by Owen Clan, uh, a very nice, nice lightweight firewall program. Uh, which is the one that I posted on uh, Brightspace. So you can just download it from there. From this sample code, you can see how to write a simple uh, firewall with net filter. Uh, and then I still need to give you this part of how to remove the headers, et cetera. So you will basically, uh, on, uh, in that where I said, you know, student starter code, that's where you're gonna do your modifications, okay? So that's basically the document um, that you will need. And then here you have some additional header files uh, that talk about the different structures, the IP header, the TCP header. As you can see, this, this code is what allows you to go from SKB, right? From the SKB uh, packet itself to the different headers and extract the different fields. Does that make sense? Which is very similar to when we started the semester, we did sniffing and spoofing. So it's very consistent. Uh, one thing to do, you're, you know, since we're gonna be using this new firewall, if, if you have your UFW firewall enabled, just disable it, right? Make sure that you always test that it's, uh, you know, that the, 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 pack, the packets can go through before you actually try to block them with your rule. So that's kind of this document. So hopefully that made sense. Um, and then now let's go over to the other document. So let's take a look at this one. Um, so same thing, 
Uh, we're going to be using net filtering or net filter. So you can read through all of this. There's the corresponding chapters also in the book. If you want to uh, read the chapter, that might uh, might find some additional useful information there. Okay. So implementing a simple firewall, um, we will implement a simple packet filtering type of firewall, which inspects incoming and outgoing packets and enforces the firewall policies by the, set by the administrator. This will be done inside the kernel, as we said. Uh, so we will use LKM. Yeah, so one great piece of news here is that in this lab, we will just set the kernel module from the host VM itself. Right? So basically we don't have to worry so much about the Docker instance. Okay. Uh, so you don't have to have multiple VMs for this. I'm not, you know, do it in one if, 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 if at all possible. So let's take a look at the, at the code here. So LKM allows us to add a new module to the kernel at runtime. And this new module enables us to extend the functionalities of the kernel without rebuilding. Here is the, the previous example, right? That uh, you can play with. Um, okay. And then here is, you will use the make file. So here's the make commands. Make sure you read this carefully for com compiling the code. These are the commands again for, um, you know, uh, adding and removing modules to the Linux kernel. Please compile a simple kernel module on your VM and run it on the VM. And for this task, we will not need to use containers. Okay. Net filter again. So here, this is talking about net filter. So notice there's a little bit more information on chapter 17 of the book. This goes into the code. So definitely here, I would strongly recommend that you read through this, okay? This part, um, and it goes into all the different parts of the code that might be relevant. Uh, note, for Ubuntu 2004, right? Uh, the code in the seed book uh, was developed for 1604. Uh, it needs to be changed slightly to work in 2004. You guys, this is important, guys. If, if you know, pay attention to this part, right? So you'll have to go. Just go into my the files I provided, LWFW and the student student starter code, and just make sure you follow these instructions. Uh, the change is in the hook registration and on registration APIs. And so here's the difference. Uh, so for Ubuntu 16.04, you have the entry. What I would do is look in the code and you'll probably see that one, right? And then, you know, it's, you know, basically then just apply this. One. Okay. And then the same thing over here for the on registration. Again, look for this one, 16.04, change it to 20.04. All right, this is an example now of uh, taking in, uh, you know, printing out information about the packets, right? So here's an example of the hook function below. It only prints out the packet information. When NetFilter invokes a hook function, it passes three arguments to the function, including a pointer to the actual SKB, which is the packet. In the following code, line one shows how to retrieve a hook number from the state argument, line two, we use IP header function to get the pointer for the IP header and then use IPv4 format string specifier to print out the source and destination IP address in line two. You see, that's actually important, right? Because when you're doing the analysis, you're going to be looking at these things. Do you guys see that? Does this make sense? So you've got your IP header over here. Right, and then notice the function IP header takes as input SKB. SKB is the as the packet, 
IPH is now pointing to just the IP header itself. So then basically that means you have the IP header and now you can reference source address and destination address for your function. Does this make sense? All right. So, and I'll, I'll build on top of this a little bit more, but these are important things to note. If you need to get the headers for other protocols, you can use the following functions defined in various header files. Uh, the, the structure definitions of these headers can be found inside uh, this folder, uh, where the version number and the path is, is the result of uname dash path. So it may be different in, in the kernel ver if the kernel version is different. But here you can see this is actually quite nice uh, because you know SKB is always the packet. If you want the IP header, you use this. TCP header, you use this. UDP header, you use that. And ICMP header, you use that. And then that's going to give you the, the different ones here so that you can now start writing your rules. Okay, your rules. As I said, you have to write five rules. I will probably give you uh, two or three. All right, so kind of some examples over there. And then you guys can uh, figure out the rest. Bear with it. Uh, Blocking packets, so that this is probably uh, one of the things you want to do, right? So this is actually, in essence, what you have to do. Okay, guys. In essence, so blocking packets. We also here provides a hook function example to show how to block a packet. Now remember, again, keep in mind, if you're sending traffic from the VM out, it may not pass through the appropriate chain. So even though you think you have a good rule, it's not gonna fire. Do you guys understand that? So you have to think about, is the packet coming into the machine, leaving the machine, or the, the usually the third one is for routers and firewalls, if it's going from one interface to the other. So it's called forwarding, like you know, going from one to the other, right? So, so uh, that's, a, that's really important. So I've seen in, in, in past years, Students have a nice the rule they think it's correct, but it just doesn't fire. And it's because, and it's very confusing if you're not aware. Uh, so basically you're gonna block a packet here if it uh, satisfies a specified condition. The following example blocks uh, UDP packets. Uh, the, the following code blocks uh, a packet if it meets the specified condition. For instance, this one blocks UDP packets if their destination IP is Google's DNS and the destination port is 53. So you see, this is a really great example. Uh, this means blocking the DNS query to the name server uh, 8888. So here's the code, block UDP, that's your function. Right, you got your SKB packet there, all right? Uh, so now you create these two structs, right? Uh, for IP and UDP, you, you can set up the DNS there. Uh, convert IPv4 addresses from dotted decimal to 32-bit number. So the, obviously, as you probably might imagine and see, uh, they have to be numbers, right? So, the, but this function will convert them. Um, as defined there. Here you go ahead and you grab the packet and you then pass it through this function, which returns basically the IP header. You can think of it that way. And now you can check if the IP header protocol equal what? Protocol of UDP. What's the number for the for UDP? Do you guys remember? Isn't it like 17 or something? No? All right. But it's got a number, right? For the protocol. I think TCP is six. No? All right, so look into that. Um, then here, it, this is important because the packet may not be um, a UDP packet, right? If it's not a UDP packet, then it's not gonna have a UDP header. You see that? That's a problem, right? So you gotta check first to see if it's a protocol UDP and the IP header before you actually uh, decide that you're going to extract the UDP header. But once we, once we know it is, then we can grab the packet, run it through the function again. This will return 
the UDP header. So now we've got the UDP header. And now we can check in the UDP header destination. Uh, this is the IP header, actually. So we can check that if this is the, the you know, if this is IP address, which we define IP address. Um, address we defined it to be, yeah, here, right? We mapped it, it's the DNS IP address. Um, Cause this is IP. This is where the mapping is being done. So then we, we compare it here to see if it's DNS. Um, and then also in the uh, UDP, now in the UDPH, which is the UDP header, we check the destination to see if it's port 53. Does this make sense? And that's it, that's your firewall right there. So once you do that, uh, the key thing is you can print out some information for yourself, but really what's important is this command. NF drop just means what? That you drop that packet. So the packet has been dropped. And so, you know, firewall is active. And it works in the kernel. So although it's not a super firewall, it's a good one, right? It's, you know, it's there. And notice if these conditions are not met, the packet is simply allowed to go through with the command NF accept. All right, so that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good one. Uh, so in the code above, lines one show, uh, this line is important. Inside the kernel, how to convert the IP address in the dotted decimal format, you know, 8.8.8 .8 to a 32-bit number. Remember, you know, so it can be compared with the binary number stored inside the packets. Line number two uh, compares the destination IP address and port number with the values of your specified rules. This is where the rules can be hard coded and it's okay. What I need to see in your lab report are the, for the five problems are this pretty much, okay? Your original this, and then some demonstration via screenshots that, hey, here it is, it works. And now logically you can see that if I add the rule now this happens, okay? And so uh, you need to provide evidence of, the, of success. Uh, line two compares, you know, I said that. If they match the rule, the NF drop will be returned to net filter, which will drop the packet. Otherwise, the NF accept will be returned and net filter will let the packet continue its journey. Okay. And NF accept only means that the packet is accepted by this hook function. It may still be dropped by other hook functions. Remember that you can think of firewalls kind of like that, like a whole bunch of chains. And they're hitting other chains, and it's you know if they match something, that's it. But then, they, or they can continue, right? So it's kind of like, and 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 that'll become ob more obvious when we look at IP tables, which will be more. This is very specific, so we're very specifically looking at one thing here. IP tables will be a lot broader, uh, and what we look at the big picture, if you will. Uh, Now you might find more code probably somewhere in the seed labs uh, for this. So if you go to 2.0, right? Check, check out that, that might help you a little bit. Or if you just wanna write them from scratch, you know, I think you have enough information here, but certainly in the 2.0 section of the seed labs. Um, so what I mean by that is if you go to seed labs. Are you guys seeing this? So if you go here, 2.0, network security, firewall exploration, this file lab setup contains a few additional files. And so you might have some more examples. That, or, it, you know, but like I said, I think what you have is enough. Um, so you can check out those files. All right, so to compile the sample code, use make file and then load it to the kernel module and demonstrate the firewall is working as expected. Um, you can use the following command to generate UDP packets for 8888. You know, you remember from the DNS lab, you're doing 372, the dig command. Uh, 
Uh, and if your firewall works, your request will be blocked. Um, otherwise, it will go through. So that, that's intuitive. Okay. So here's some examples of things that you could do. Ping, for instance. So, I, so something related to ICMP, I always consider a rule, right? So something related to ICMP, something related to a service, something related to IPs is an easy one, but could be. Um, protocols. Um, flags, you know, and if you could do payload on your own, that would be good as well. Okay, and as I said, remove when you're done. All right, so that seems to be it. After that, it's, as I said, it's IP tables, and IP tables is a much broader topic that we will discuss um, after spring break, but it should be also very interesting. We will look at all of this the rules. I'll make sure that. So this will be very interesting reading, but for later. All right. So that's all the documentation that I have on uh, posted in the folder. So I've gone over it basically the two the two files, and this. Now let's take a look at you know, some additional commands that we might want to consider uh, for this. So let me switch over to the um, whiteboard. All right, so we're going to take a look at some additional things that we can do. All right, so remember, this is the LWFW file. Okay, so you will download download this from Brightspace. It's the one that I uploaded. Okay, there's going to be a lot of files in there, but one of them is called LWFW. I've provided uh, LWFW starter code. So what you need to do is create a backup of this one and then rename this one, right? Rename this one is just LW. You guys see that? And then just use this one. You need to put it in the same folder, right? So LW. FW. So that should be like the first thing you should do for this. All right, so we download the file, LWFW, you on, remember it's tarred, so on tar it. Then after that, you can, once you've done this, right, you're in the folder. And then now in, you know, let's say C, you CD. CD into LWFW. That's your folder. You can put this anywhere you want on your desktop. Then there's going to be, if you do LS in there, there's going to be several files like LW. LWFW, but there's also going to be a make file in there. Right? Make. So what you have to do when you see that file is, let's say that you've already updated your code, the, the one, this one, right? The original, the one that you downloaded, the starter code. Then now on the terminal, you should be able to compile everything just by typing make, that's it. Okay, you just have to type make. Once that's finished and you're here and you do LS again, 
then you should see a, as an output uh, a file called lwfw.ko. Okay. So this is going to be your kernel, your LKM object. This is your LKM object. So once that's completed, then the next step is to upload it. So all you have to do is do sudo insmod insmod uh, lw fw dot ko. Make sense? That should be it. Okay. And then at that point, it's there. You don't, it's not like you have to press a button or anything. It's just there. Now it's running. It's cooked and the code is going to do what it's supposed to do. So at this point, you know, let's just say uh, test your rules to see if they work. Okay. So test your rules. Then, you know, let's say you're done and it worked and everything is good. So you can remove, let's say to remove uh, type. Uh, then you may need to use sudo. Oh, you use sudo here. So sudo, and it's going to be rm mod um, and the same one, lwfw.ko. And that removes it from there. Okay. All right. So that, that's it. I mean, that's literally it. Okay. As far as what you have to do, you just have to also. Now, the, the key part that remains is that this code here, right? This is where you need to, uh, which is the next thing we're going to do. This is where you need to make modifications. Okay. Uh, all the rules that you want to update on them. All right. So now let's take a look at some of these. All right. So what are some piece of it, pieces of information that you might need? So if you're so you'll basically focus uh, your attention on IP headers or possibly UDP headers or possibly ICMP headers or possibly TCP headers. Okay. So in the um, in the IP header, you have the protocol. So you might find protocol in there, or you will, protocol. So you have some protocols already defined. These are, these are not protocols. I'll write this, not port numbers, okay? Not the same thing, okay? Port numbers are gonna be here in these. So protocol is, uh, you know, it tells you what type of a packet it is. So for instance, one should be ICMP. Okay, one should be ICMP, uh, which are the important ones. Uh, six should be TCP. All your Telnet, SSH, et cetera. Um, there's, a, there's more, obviously, there's more, the other numbers have also, uh, but the ones that we usually look at, 17 is UDP. 17, oops. Seventeen is UDP. All right, and so on. Okay, so this is uh, for your own reference. It might be of, of use to you. And there are other numbers there that could be relevant. So now let's take a look uh, at some of the rules. 
Um, let's see. So remember, you have to do five rules. So this part, it'll probably be better to type it up. So let me go. So let's go back here. This file, I'm going to download it. I don't know if I download it. Go to the downloads. And I'm going to open that file from the downloads. This one, Notepad++, so just a little bit, you know, we'll use that. I think this is the Notepad. OK, so if you remember, uh, you have kind of like this, this file. I'll have to read the documentation, but I'll give you basic uh, overview. So in here, in the student provided function, Right, you should be seeing C code right now. Okay. In here, you kind of have to think about the logic that you would implement. Okay, so so SKB would contain your uh, packet information. SKB, right? Uh, now you had some functions in there that would allow you to get uh, the IP header, right? So we, you know, we saw that. So I'm just gonna use like a generic because I don't I don't remember the names there in the PDF. So get IP header, right? Let's say I think it was IP. And then now you have it in IP header. Okay. So you have basically your your that. And now you can think of rules that you want to do. So you can possibly uh, just check the protocol. So you can do if IP header, IP header, and then you can check protocol equal six, then this is a TCP packet. Okay, so this is a TCP packet. So just like that, that's the basic idea. Um, from there then, remember, it, you have to know that something is a TCP packet before you try to extract the TCP header, right? So in the previous example, I think we looked at a UDP uh, header. In this one, you would look at TCP header. The functions were provided in the documentation, so we can uh, explore them. Where were they? I think they were here. We look at this document. Oh, was this the? Sorry, I was in the wrong. Okay, so the functions in question that we need are here. So these are these are the these are the functions that are going to be very important to you. So IP header, TCP header, UDP header, and ICMP header. So in this case, we can take a look at TCP header SKB. We can go back to the notepad and we can we can say TCP uh, header. Okay, it takes on uh, SKB. So actually, this should be IP header. All right, so now we can extract from here the TCP part of the packet. And so we assign that to something like TCP header, right, TCP header. Um, 
And then from there, you have to decide what you're going, what you're going to do to drop the packet. So if you wanted to drop a service, right? This is a TCP packet or a TCP header. So now let's say that your rule is to drop all packets based on the service. So what would be the logic? The logic would be okay, to compare from that TCP header, uh, so you're gonna say if TCP header, uh, and then let's say destination port, right? Destination port equals 22. You see that? So if that's, you know, if that's the, what you decide, this is your rule here. So you're basically saying, you know what? I am blocking um, blocks all SSH access. Okay, that's an important. Okay. Um, also, be careful. Actually, that this is an important thing. That I, it it rarely happens, but it could happen. Be careful the rules that you put in, because you're literally putting rules in a firewall, and you could literally block yourself out of the machine. You guys see what I'm saying by that? So it rarely happens, but students are creative at, at doing things like this. <laughs> yeah, so uh, think, think a little bit about the implications because you, you, know, you could corrupt the, the VM, um, what is sometimes called bricking the device. All right, so now that you've, you, so, so hopefully this makes sense. I mean, there's not really that much else to say. Uh, this would block a service. So what you might want to do is find some way of printing to a log. So I would say, print to log, right? There are some commands in there that you can use in the PDF. And then finally, don't forget the return uh, NF drop, okay? Remember, that's the thing, that's the command that will actually uh, stop this. If none of this is true, you, you still should say, for this function, return NF accept. Okay, so that the function is going to be expect. You know, by default, uh, if nothing else is met, it'll just accept the packet, let it go through. Otherwise, it'll drop the packet. All right, so I think that should be enough to give you one rule. Like I said, I, I would give you at least one or two rules. So that one, it's not exactly, guys but it's pretty close, okay? So if you just read, if you start with this one and then look at the, 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 the document, the PDF, you should be able to write it. So that's, uh, this one would block um, 22. If you wanted to drop all ICMP, what could you do? Hmm? Okay, and do, but how do you, how do you, let's say you want to write a rule to block all ICMP. Could you do it with this code? Block all ICMP, no, no, no. So if you remember in the notes, the whiteboard, I gave you the protocol number. One, six, and seventeen. So, in theory, right? You could just do one for ICMP, and then you know it's ICMP. So then just return NF drop. Got it? All right. So that's you know that's something. So this is one example. Uh, service is is obviously the. It's usually the most um, well known. Now, another one might be um, another rule might be to drop by packets. So, how would we accomplish something like that? Since, uh, sorry, by IP address. So, since the IP address is located where? 
and the IP header, right? Okay. So we're going to take a look at another if statement over here. So this would be like a second rule that you could try. Um, you can make it more interesting by making it a, a range or, or something along those lines. But here, um, we're just going to go and say, now remember that the, the tricky part with this is that you need to convert the, the string dotted format into an integer. So there should be a function in there called init address, especially in the student in the student student starter code. Um, I know that, that I put a function in there for um, uh, converting to 32 bit number scheme so that you can, oh, actually it's, it's listing it there, right? So it should be in here somewhere. And okay. There it is. Converts IP string to unsigned integer. Okay, so hopefully that should do it for you. Um, at the end of the day, you just need a number. So then you can use init address um, and then provide in there your string IP. So let's say, like the example said, you want to block, you know, DNS for whatever reason. And so now you just have to, this is a function. So parentheses. And now this rule would have to compare something to this, right? So what do you what what would you put here to complete this um, this rule? What do you guys think? So it's got to be the the address, right? Maybe the destination address and the IP header. We already have the IP header over here. So I can just start with IP header like that. And then I'm going to say the specific one. So it's destination address and then equal. You see that? So if destination address is uh, equal to that, you know, then we are going to. Um, so now what do we do? That's actually the question. So if it matches that the destination, which means the packet, remember the packet is going to that. So the destination address reads 88888. Then now you can go ahead and return NF. Right? And that means that the packet will be dropped. Otherwise, remember, it just gets accepted. So here, in this is like a chain where you've added two rules already so and so i can write over here so you can use these as i said for for uh for the for the first two or the five so here you can block uh 888 ip okay so that's another example that should be helpful to you Let me see if I have maybe one more rule. Okay, so I already mentioned the one about ICMP. That's an easy one. Uh, you know, just change it to one, um, but you can definitely block by protocol, you can call it.
So this is where looking at the PDF um, might be helpful because there might be a few additional examples there as you have to craft, as I said, five rules. Yeah, so let's, so the, the third one will be, as I said, just kind of this. Um, I can add that one here. And you can say IP, if IP protocol, let's say one for ICMP. Block, but this blocks all ICMP. Ping, right? So remember, this is ping packets. And so we can say, uh, we don't have to look at, there will be no TCP header in fact. And so we would say here, we really just need All right, so this would be a third rule and that should be fine if you can make these work. So now you have one rule here for blocking services, TCP, one rule here for blocking uh, IP address, and one rule here for blocking um, protocol, ICMP. Now what remains is for you guys to do two more. And so that 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 part I definitely leave to you as part of the whole. Okay, so that's. Uh, are there any questions at this time of any of this? Yeah. So it should be. You know, I think it should be clear enough. I think. Um, key thing is definitely paying attention to the document. Uh, maybe check out the book. I don't see any hints here for things. This is actually the correct syntax. So you can uh, you can use some of the functions in the other in the code that are already provided. But this uh, these I like these functions. To be honest, and clean. Um, let's see. No, oh yeah, I, the one the one thing I wanted to mention is notice this, right? This part here is a print statement. So this is kind of like logging, okay? So this is logging. Uh, and then you can check out um, things like um, syslog in, in the var log folder. Uh, you can do tail just to look at the la last few lines or, or cat maybe. and uh, so you can see that whenever this was this is kind of like the hit count. So every time you hit you hit one of these rules, it'll print to the log. So you can also use that in your screenshots as evidence that you completed the task. So if I see that, uh, but you have to put in all the fields in there, so it's clear for me. But I wanted to stress this because it, it can help me a little bit as I look at your homework. Um, but yeah, so that's that's that, and then I don't see any other. All right, yes, yeah, so so that's basically all I have for today. Um, that kind of uh, when we 
finish a little early today, um, but you know, I'm, I, I covered all the material and you have this assignment that is now gonna be due. So I'll create the Dropbox for this. Uh, remember, this is the C software firewalls. This is C, C code. Um, so let's just create the new assignment. Let me share, let me make sure I'm sharing this. Okay. So this is, uh, we're gonna call it homework. Seed software and also L CAM for Linux kernel module, a loadable kernel module. Okay, so this is going to be due today is the eighth, right? So, but then you have spring break. So this will be due on the 24th. Okay, makes sense. All right, so it'll be due on the 24th by 10 p.m. It's going to open. Now, and it'll stay open until it's Saturday. All right, so implement five rules, five firewall rules as discussed in class using net filter and the loadable. module LCAM. Okay. So implement five firewall rules as discussed in class using the Netflix. Sorry. The Netflix. <laughs> wow. It's been a long day. Sorry about that. Uh, uh, in class using NetFilter uh, and the loadable kernel modules. That's clear enough, correct? Yeah. All right. So yeah. So there you go. You have that assignment. And you have plenty of time to finish it, but I think it should be pretty doable. All right, uh, that kind of is a uh, question. Quick question. Um, yeah. So again, if you if you email me homework, it goes to the queue. The end of the queue. Um, I think I've graded sim flooding. And reset attacks, I believe I graded like half of it. Uh, but yeah, I'm grading Brightspace. So make sure you always submit your homework via Brightspace. If you submit via email, I will get to it as I have time. All right, are there any questions, guys? Again, if you submit via email, it just took a while. Yes, a good a good metric to know when I'm finished is if if bright space is if you see a lot of bright space that I have to get through, you know that's my priority as students submitted this on time, and so the queue comes after bright space. So that's why, you know, you should not submit via email, right, guys? <laughs> All right, great. So uh, if you have any questions, just ask. Work on this, um, you know. But I'll stop the recording at this time as I don't have, you know, I finished with the content.